What's going on my friends? This is Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U and today we're going to talk about how to apply Ohm's Law out in the field. So, very briefly, what is Ohm's Law? Ohm's Law is the relationship that exists between voltage, amperage, resistance, and power. It's a mathematical relationship, so it's a series of different formulas that if you rearrange the equations, you can get certain unknowns from other knowns. So if we know the KW rating of a furnace, and we know the voltage, but we don't know what the amperage is, we have a way of calculating what that is. So we use Ohm's Law out in the field because we can't really readily identify what's going on in the circuit. We can't just, you know, like a plumber could watch water do its thing and it can, he can see, oh, I see what's wrong here. But as electricians, we have to be a little bit more detectives, I guess you could say, because what we deal with is theoretical and we can't see most of the time what's going on in a circuit. So that is why we use Ohm's Law. So here's a couple of examples of how you would use Ohm's Law out in the field rather than just theoretically trying to understand math. So a little bit about Ohm's Law before I get into it. For those that don't know, there are these different wheels that represent the mathematical relationships uh, that we deal with. There's actually more formulas, but these are kind of like the simple wheels that you're gonna be taught the most. Um, this they call the power wheel. It specifically deals with power, with wattage, KW, um, and the relationship between amperage and voltage. So how you would use this chart is say you're trying to find wattage. You're gonna cover up whichever value you're trying to find, and below it, you would multiply these two values. So I times E. So P equals I times E. But if you come over here, say you're trying to find volts, this is above this, so you, it, the equation for voltage would be E equals P over I. Same thing here, I equals P over e, e. So you can do the same thing with this one. If you're trying to find R, obviously it's E over I. If you're trying to find E, it's I times R. You get the deal. Our first example, say that we need to figure out how many uh, light poles we can put on a circuit. Uh, we know that in this example, each light pole is a 400 watt metal halide. We're running 120 volts to them. It's a 20 amp circuit that we have to work with. So how much total wattage can we put on a 20 amp circuit considering each one of these is 400 watts? So the first thing we'd have to do is figure out how many watts total. And you would do that by multiplying the voltage times the amperage. We're trying to find watts. So we cover up watts on our chart E times I is the formula, amps times volts. So you would just rewrite the formula, P equals I times E. Um, so P would equal the amperage I, which is 20 amps in our case. E is the voltage, it's a 120 volt circuit. And P equals 2400 watts. So we have a total of 2400 watts on this circuit to work with. If each lamp is 400 watts, then you do 2400 uh, divided by 400, and you get six. You could put six lamps on this circuit, or six light poles, six 400 watt lights. So uh, something to think about in that specific example, since we're talking about commercial lighting in a parking lot, it's likely that that's gonna be a continuous load, meaning that the, the lights are gonna be on for more than three hours. So in code with continuous loads, you never wanna load up more than 80% of your circuit rating. So if you have a 20 amp circuit, you really only wanna load it up to 16 amps um, because it's a continuous load. So in that calculation, you're really looking, instead of calculating 20 amps times 120 volts, you're gonna to wanna to do 16 amps times 120 volts, which ends up being four lamps rather than six. But you get the idea. I'm just trying to show you the math, really. This episode is brought to you by Rogers. So if any of you out there are looking to become an electrician or you are currently an electrician and you're looking to make that change over to the commercial service world, um, go check their website out and see what they're about. Uh, they're a nationwide company, so they have offices and techs all over the U.S. 
Um, so they probably have the location near you. Uh, if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about them, there is a link in the description below. All right, another example would be, say we're trying to figure out what kind of lamp is up in a pole. Say this pole is like 30 feet up in the air, the head is. So the only way to get to it would be to have a bucket truck. But say you're on site, you're trying to gather information, you don't have a bucket truck, um, and you're still trying to figure out, well, what kind of lamps do they have up there? You can actually figure that out by just going down to the handhole. So every single one of these fixtures uh, or poles is gonna have a handhole at the bottom of it. You can walk up, pull your meter out, and actually test from the voltage and the amperage there and do a calculation to figure out what wattage that lamp is burning. The light has to be on for this to work because you need to read values there. So if the power is shut off, your meter is not gonna do anything for you. But if you take your meter down here and you test between these two, you know, two wires that are going up to the light, we'll say this is a 480 volt, even though it's black red, you know, it's not gonna be black red if it's 480 volts, but we're gonna say this is a 480 volt pole. We've tested that with our meter. You can actually take your ammeter while this thing is on as well and clamp around it and we test 0.83 amps. Well, we can use the pie chart again to uh, take the voltage times the amperage, figure out what the wattage of that lamp is. So um, do the same thing, P equals I times E. We're looking for watts, P, but we know our amperage is 0.83. We know our voltage is 480 volts. So we know that our wattage equals 400 watts. So we know that that is a 400 watt lamp. We can look up and be like, oh, it's the skinny tube with the, the skinny lamp. So that's definitely high pressure sodium. Um, and from our calculation, we can figure it's 400 watts, not a thousand or not a 600 watt. Um, but that's just a good useful thing to be able to figure something out if you're in a pinch on the job site. So another thing that we might use out in the field is trying to find voltage drop, right? So there's a couple different ways to find voltage drop. Most of you are probably um, used to seeing something like this, where your voltage drop equals two times a constant, what the amperage of the circuit is, what the distance, or the length of the circuit is, over the circular mill of the conductors that you're trying to find it. It's a lot of information to find, so you have to like know a lot of these different values, you have to know the constants, find these things out, so it takes a little bit longer. There's a simple way to do a voltage drop calculation using Ohm's law. Um, one thing that you do have to look up in code is to figure out what the resistance value of the wire is that you're running. So I know just off the top of my head that a thousand feet of number 12 THHN equals two ohms of resistance over that whole thing. So I have a 50 foot run of wire, but it's a 50 foot distance. It's not a 50 foot run of wire. It's actually a hundred feet because there's two conductors. There's your hot and your neutral. So you have to put a hundred foot of that resistance value in. So I can just deduce that if a thousand feet is two ohms, well, then 100 feet is 0.2 ohms. You just move the decimal place over one. So I know what my resistance value is now. I've got two ohms of resistance. I've got 120 volt circuit, 16 amps. So when you plug all these things in, we're trying to solve for voltage drop. So E, D, voltage drop. So a lot of people would think, okay, well, I see voltage, I see amperage, and so that means that I can plug my voltage and my amperage in, but that doesn't help you because what you're trying to solve for is voltage drop, not solve for the voltage of this system. We're trying to figure out once we kick this motor on, how many volts is this circuit going to drop over the whole distance? So we would still take voltage and multiply it by I times R. And again, I put the D there just to let you know we're talking about voltage drop, we're not talking about any other kind of voltage. So what we need to use is our 16 amps for I, for our amperage. 
times our resistance, which we just figured out, which is 0.2 ohms. So voltage drop equals 3.2 volts. That means that when this thing kicks on, the whole voltage of that circuit is gonna drop 3.2 volts. Um, actually, probably a little bit more accurately because of inrush current, it's gonna drop more and then come back up to you know a 3.2 uh, drop, but that you can figure out using this as well, you might get like 3.19. There's gonna be a little bit of a difference in the two formulas, but that's a simple way that you can use voltage drop um, or use Ohm's law to solve voltage drop out in the field. One quick thing to mention about that is that the examples I just showed are for two conductors for a 120 volt circuit. So that's a little bit different than a three phase. You can't use anything I just talked about for three phase. For three phase, you actually have to use this. Um, you would use 1.732 times KID over the circular mill. You just have to do that because the, the normal Ohm's law you know, wheel that I was just showing you doesn't figure in the fact that you have three hots. Uh, typically voltage drop is gonna be slightly less on a three phase circuit for the same amperage, uh, but just figured I'd throw that little tidbit in there. So another example that we could use is if we're, say we have like a heating element of some sort, it could be like a heated floor or it could be like a large heater in a room and we're trying to figure out what size conductors we need to run to it. Well, we can solve it a couple of different ways. So say that heating element in this piece of equipment is rated at 240 volts. It says on the sticker or on the nameplate, whatever. It says this is a 240 volt load and it is a 2.4 kW kilowatt uh, load, which is also a 2400 watt load. But those are the only two pieces of information that we have, and we need to know what the amperage is so we can figure out what size wires we need to run to the thing. So if we're going to use power and voltage, we can't use the, this, uh, the resistance wheel, we have to use the power wheel. So we would try to solve for amperage. So we cover that value and we know that our formula turns into P over E. We have our power, which is 2400 watts. And we have our voltage, which is 240 volts. So the current is 10 amps. So we know, okay, well, it's only going to draw 10 amps, so I can probably get away with running number 14 to it or number uh, 12 to it, depending, you know, if it's continuous load, all that shit. Um, but you get the idea. This is just how you would use it uh, to, to solve that if you're looking, or if you have the wattage, if you have the KW. Now, let's say that we don't have the KW, that this was just a piss poor machine or unit that was bought, and you have to figure out the, other, the rest of it. Well, you can take your uh, ohm meter out over here, and we put one lead up to this side, one lead up to this side, and we tested that there is a 24 ohm resistance on this. Well, now we have two values to solve for the third value that we're looking for. So this time we're dealing with resistance, so you have to use the ohm wheel. Um, we're still trying to solve for amperage to figure out what size wires we run to it, but this time, since we have uh, a resistance, we have to use this wheel. So say we've got I, equals E over R, 240 volts over 24 uh, ohms, and I, of course, still equals 10 amps. So it's just, it goes to show that there's a couple of different ways using the values that we have available to us. If we're smart and we can think, oh, I can find this value with my meter using this, and then I can plug it into the formula but there's a bunch of different ways that you can do that. So just a little quick bit on math for those of you that don't really know how an equation works. An equation means that on one side of the equal sign, the stuff on the other side also equal each other. It is an equation. Everything on both sides has to be equal. So if you don't have this wheel memorized, but you can remember EIR or something like that, and you have one thing to go off of, you can move things around in an equation. So say that we, um, we wanna get resistance alone, and that's the thing we want to 
have everything else equal to. Right now, everything in the equation is equal to i. Say we want everything equal to r. Well, what you would do is you would divide out the value that you don't want, and you also have to do the same thing on the other side of the equation. You have to balance that equation to make something move through the equation. So that isolates r by itself. So now this equation is e over i equals r. So it's saying that e equals i times r is the same thing as r equals e over i. It is identical. It's saying the exact same thing. It's just which values do you have to solve with. So the same thing would be true if we, instead of isolating r, say we wanted to isolate i. If we've got e equals i times r, and we want to get i out by itself, then you would just divide by r to get rid of them, and then you divide this by r because you have to balance the equation, do the same thing on both sides. So the, the ultimate equation for e would, or for i would be e over r. So that goes back down here, i equals e over r. All three of these equations are saying the exact same thing they're just all three set up in a way for you to have one variable that you don't know while you know the other two. So you can do things with these two values in each one of the equations to solve for this. So really dealing with Ohm's law is not all that difficult. Um, the math can be a little intimidating sometimes, trying to figure out how to rearrange an equation to get the right value and which values you're working with. Um, but beyond that, it's really not all that difficult. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you have any comments, questions, leave all that stuff below. Love you crazies, and I will see you in the next episode.